whenever I write a program for a robot that's going to avoid obstacles or it's going to wander around until it runs into another robot, maybe in a sumo match or in bumper cars or something like that, I like to incorporate random behaviors. And I do that for two reasons. The first reason is I, I just get bored watching a robot that is predictable. The second, more important reason is that it's uh, often the case that your robot gets caught in a situation where it uh, just ends up repeating some sort of monotonous behavior over and over again and never gets out of uh, kind of a rut. And so by incorporating randomness into the program, that we can almost always avoid a robot getting into such a situation. And so uh, the, the easiest way to do that here in our program is to make it so that instead of always turning left, when that front sensor is triggered, sometimes it turns right. There's no reason to turn left. If we just we picked that because it was easy to do at the time. To make it so that it turns left on occasion and right on occasion, I'm going to create an if statement here. I'm going to say if, and then I'm going to use this random function. And what this random function does is it uh, it's like rolling the dice. Every time it runs, it pulls up a number. And I'm going to, by putting a 2 here, I can get this random number to generate either a 0 or a 1. Now that's a little confusing. We're going to see why in just a second. But the, the critical idea here is that this if statement needs either a true or a false to go inside here. Well, a 1 equates to true, and a 0 equates to false. Uh, now let's go take a look at that random function. If I go to the reference and I scroll down, I can see right here is the random function and I can see a syntax right here. It can take either uh, one argument or two arguments. If it's a one argument it's just the maximum number and the, the minimum is assumed to be zero. Otherwise uh, you can change that minimum number and then give it a maximum number. The, uh, it's important to note here that the, the lower bound, or the minimum number, is inclusive. So it will include 0 and it will include all the numbers above that except for the maximum number, which is the upper bound. So by putting a 2, it doesn't include 2, but it includes everything below 2, 1 and 0. Getting back to our program, all we have to do now is create an open ellipse. I'm going to tab that command over. So if this random number generates a 1, then the robot will turn left. But if otherwise, if else, it returns a 0, then I'm just going to make the robot turn right 90 degrees. And that's all I have to do to make my robot turn random directions. Go ahead and upload this to your nanomass and make sure that it's working.